Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're moving over into chapter 35, 40 chapters all told, but let's read from verse the first three verses in chapter 35. Guess what, which day, just take a wild, wild guess, which day comes up again, yet again, how many times in Exodus? Okay, well, here we go. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of the sons of Israel and said to them, these are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a holy day, a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. All right, so here's the Sabbath yet again. It's like, is God hinting? Is he trying to help us? Does he know that one day it's going to become a forgotten blessing, a forgotten thing, the seventh day Sabbath? Well, here it is again. And um, you're probably getting tired of it by now if you're not a Sabbath keeper. But if you're not a Sabbath keeper, you should revisit the whole question of Sabbath and Sunday. It's, it's, a, it's a very fascinating study. It's a rich historical study to see how the commandments of God were replaced by the commandments of men. That's not my burden right here right now. But I would say, um, he, he says, these are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. Six days you do work, but on the seventh day you have a holy day. It's a not a rest to the Lord, it's a complete rest to the Lord in this translation. And uh, notice that there's a death penalty attached here. So this is kind of a theocracy. God is in control uh, more directly. And so you have actually a death penalty for a believer who knows better, who knows that he should obey, and he breaks the Sabbath. Boom, death penalty here. Point of interest uh, to me, though, is um, how vivid, how um, intense God is about the Sabbath. So intense that there's even, here we see that death penalty there, so intense. And did you notice what it said there? Look at it again. For, verse 2, for six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day, listen to this, you shall have a holy day, a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. So the Sabbath is, is made for man. It says in other places it belongs to God. It's the Lord's holy day. But here it says it is a Sabbath rest to the Lord. So when we keep the Sabbath, we are not just, just raking in the blessings for us. The Sabbaths we keep, there are blessings for us, but the Sabbaths we keep are to the Lord. We are, uh, we are worshiping our God, worshiping God on the, his, the Sabbath. His Sabbath, yes, made for man, but his Sabbath. So the, all Sabbaths, all true, the seventh-day Sabbath, when it's observed, always is a true Sabbath. It's an Sabbath observance to the Lord. We're worshiping God. We're not worshiping the day. We're not worshiping the commandment. We're not worshiping the Ten Commandments. We're worshiping the Lord, the Lord God. And it is a Sabbath to the Lord. So um, if that's the case, then why would we ever not do that? Now, another piece of interest here is you should not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. So here we have this uh, business. Now, it doesn't say you can't have a fire in your dwellings. It says you can't kindle one during the Sabbath day. So if it was cold, so if it was cold, so if it was cold there in the desert on some of those cold nights, uh, say it's Friday and it's going to be a little bit of cool that weekend, what then? Well, you would kindle your fire before sundown, okay? You just started the fire before sundown and you could feed it a little bit as it went, but you're not kindling it, you're not starting it, you're not starting it during the Sabbath hours, you're not taking the energy, the time, spending the time and energy Sabbath is kept discreet. It's kept separate. It's not a time for vast labor. It's kind of the same like with your, your um, dishes of food. You're not going to do a big giant kitchen escapade and do a gigantic, uh, some kind of a giant cooking project on the Sabbath. Uh, you might reheat something. You might warm something when you're done. You're not going to do a full dishwasher hit, you know, wash all the dishes on the Sabbath, but you might rinse it out in the sink just and so that it's pretty clean and set it aside. It can be washed more thoroughly after Sabbath. So there's kind of a, a practicality, a common sense way to do things. And uh, I don't think those things are wrong. But if you're going to yeah, go full bore on something and get into a project on the Sabbath that's not at all associated with worship and Sabbath rest, you're, 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 you're in the wrong place. 
So anyway, the Sabbath again, again, again in Exodus. I don't know, is this the seventh time? How many times has the Sabbath come up in Exodus? I haven't counted them, but there certainly have been several. So the Sabbath today, uh, here the book of Exodus, near the end, Shemot, the names, the, the, the tribes of Israel, and we call it Exodus, but you know what is interesting? That as we come down here, there yet again, uh, how many times is God going to flash it into our face? Because we need it flashed into our face. Some of you are watching this and you're saying the Sabbath, the Sabbath, you mean Sunday? No, I mean sundown Friday to set through sundown Saturday night. That is the biblical Sabbath. So, okay, we won't, uh, won't push the, on the point, but Exodus, Moses is talking about it yet again. So, interesting, and I think worth your time uh, as a person who wants to be a, an echo, echoing Jesus. It's kind of hard to echo Jesus without the Sabbath. All right, have a beautiful day, and we'll see you next time.